Welcome, Dr. Kozakin. Thank you so much for those kind words. I hope everybody can hear me. Come on, guys, I can't hear you. Yeah. 300, I was told, 300 are in the audience. Why am I hearing only five or six people? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. What's the what's the name of the talk? What's the can everybody read what is up there? What's the title of the talk? Yes, success made ridiculously simple. All right. So I was asked by OMS, and I'm uh, I'm honored to be here. I'm humbled by the invite, and you know, 300 uh, bright, uh, brilliant, excellent people, ambitious people. You know, it's a beautiful day out there, right? You have to have absolute commitment to be sitting in here, in a dark room, listening to talk after talk after talk, that in itself tells me that you will be successful. You will be the examples that people will quote to others. I have no doubt, just by being here all day, you've already clearly documented that you are all destined to be great. I will also like to, I was just introduced to Ola, and this is another example. She started this OMS eight years ago, and it was a dream that she had. Now, OMS presentations or seminars happen all across North America. So it was just somebody's dream that was realized and materialized and she told me this and she was 16 when she started that. Now she is a UBC first year medical student and goes all over North America to deliver speeches for OMS events. Let's give her a round of applause. So a wise man once said, dreams are not what you see during sleep. They are the things that do not let you go to sleep. That is what a dream is. So this is somebody's dream come true. Can anybody else tell me, can anybody else tell me a dream that was realized, something that was created out of nothing? Can you think of something else? What is Google? What is Facebook? What is Uber? What is Instagram? What is Twitter? That is what awaits all of you. Because when I was applying to medical school, I had to write letters. Couldn't I? I had to write letters, post a letter, and then wait for months for the letter to be weeks to letter to travel, then to answer and then come back. Here you have, you send an email and instantly you get a response, right? So those are the opportunities that currently exist and future will even bring you more opportunities. You live in a country, you know, in this, at this point in time, in the world, you've got places where women are not allowed to work. You've got places where people are persecuted because they, because of their beliefs. But you live in a country where you have freedom, where you have security, where you have endless opportunities. So the world is your oyster. Dream big. Goals should be audacious. Goals should be huge. You know why? Because goals are like magnets. And the bigger the magnet, what does it do? The more it attracts. Thank you so much. There is initiative. There is initiative. See? People who succeed in life are those who have initiative, show initiative, or develop initiative. 
All right? Everybody with me? Right. So let's talk about the educational background. I started I, my journey in Pakistan. I got great education in Pakistan. I was telling Sahil and uh, Lalinas that uh, they, they asked me why medicine, how medicine. I said my mother. And uh, so then they said any other uh, family member in in your, any other family member who was there before you in medicine. I said none. And they said that how come medicine? I said my mother. All right. So that is where it started. Then I went to Europe and I was there. And I trained there, then I went to Boston at Harvard Medical School, Beth Israel. Uh, I trained there a little bit more, then I went to Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, did my MBA, and then I moved to Vancouver. So why am I telling you all this? Because God forbid if you do not get into the institution of your choice, and God forbid if you have to go abroad to get education, for example if you go to Ireland to get medical school, uh, training or you know you have to go somewhere else that's not the end of the world don't give up don't get depressed I started in Pakistan and then I was in Europe and then I was in the US and now I'm in Canada so a bend in the road a bend in the road is the end of the road only if you refuse to take the turn everybody with me so this is everybody with me. Yes. Thank you. Pakistan, all right. Ireland, Boston, Atlanta, Vancouver. All right. So let's talk about success. You have to be hungry. I'll show you an example of what hungry means. You have to have the faith. Use the experience, your own and others. Be careful of the company you choose. Find a mentor and then ultimately give back. These are the essentials for success. Can everybody see this? Is it too bright or? Yes? You can see it? All right, so this is a video uh, filmed somewhere in Africa. And in Africa, the only thing that can catch a deer is a tiger. All right? Human beings can't run as fast. All right? So this is a video that shows that two men with sticks are going to take away the deer from two cheetahs, like cheetahs. All right? So this is this is not uh, something that has been photoshopped. This is real. Now watch this. Though they are enraged at having their prey stolen, the cheetahs will not call the Bushman's bluff. You know what hunger means now? How many have ever had an encounter with an asthmatic, somebody who has asthma? How many, by the way, in the room have asthma? I do. How many have had an encounter with an asthmatic? Alright? As bad as an asthmatic needs air during the attack, that is how bad you need to want to succeed. All right, let's talk about faith. Does anybody know this individual? Has anybody seen this video before? This was on Times Magazine a few years ago. This gentleman is Eric, uh, Eric Weinmeier. He climbed the Everest. He prepared for over 10 years to climb the Everest. He became a motivational speaker. Delivers talks all over the world. <coughs> what is unique about him? How many people have climbed the Everest? Go ahead, please. Go ahead. 
He absolutely. He strived for it, made it a goal for uh, him and was totally committed. Thank you so much. That uh, again initiative. So let's let this be. I'll come over and bring the microphone over to you. Thank you. Do we have to film the Q&A? Okay, so um, as far as I know, a lot of us are in like grade 10 to 12. Um, what would your recommendation be if we wanted to get to med school? What, what are the steps we should take? Well, it is never too early to start. It is never too early to start. If you think you are interested in medicine or medis medical related field, get in touch with somebody who works at a university, a physician who works at a university. What people often do is they will go to a private practitioner in a private clinic. When you want to work with somebody, you have to have multiple goals. Number one is develop a connection. Number two, try and get a publication. Number three, improve your credentials you know if you mention somebody's private clinic on your resume that does not have the impact that a university affiliation may have so you've got to think of all those things and in your summer vacation try and look for opportunities where somebody will accommodate you I know as high school students we don't have that much to offer our mentors so is there a way to kind of make a difference or like be more um, suitable for a position as a mentee within a much wanted position within a team? All right, so that is a very, very good question. Now remember one thing, you've got to change that thinking. As a mentee, you have everything to offer, your commitment, your hard work. As a mentor, my job is my, my moral, ethical commitment is to help a mentee everybody you know if you are going to win the lotto and i find out and i make best friends with you you know that's not friendship right so a mentor is somebody who's going to train you bring you up to speed you don't want a mentor who kisses up and kicks down because that is not a mentor that is a selfish individual who just wants work for horses and who just wants people to sort of comply with everything, not make any mistake, and you know, make the mentor successful, that's not a job of a mentee. A mentor's job is to ensure the success of the mentee. A mentor's job is to bring opportunities that the mentee did not even, uh, could not even envision. Or in mentee's mind, those opportunities never existed. So it is a mentor's job. All you have to do is have a commitment and show commitment. I hope I've answered the question. Um, before you mentioned uh, that you had some high school students who got a lab position, how would a high school student go about uh, getting a lab position? You can contact me through my website. You can contact me through my website, you can send me your resume, you can send me a brief personal statement. One request I'll make to all of you is, sometimes students write an email to me which is three, four pages. Don't do that because, you know, one paragraph is enough. Some people even write to me and they tell me their grandfather's story, and then their father's story, and then their brother's and sister's story, and then at the end is their own story. And so just one paragraph of what you want to do, how you would like help, all right? One thing I'll tell you, students come to me and they ask for funding or money. Nobody is going to pay you to train you. Keep that in mind, right? If you are fully trained, people will pay you. But if somebody is going to train you, then you should be glad that that person is not asking for money from you. Right? So that is what students insist, oh please give us funding. But if you, I'm going to train you, then I can't pay you. And then, you know, if I'm having 20 high school students, how many can I pay? Or how many can I afford to pay, right? I hope I've answered the question. Yes. Alright, so one question at a time. If we have time, we can come back to you. 
Let let other people get the opportunity, please. Yes, who else? Yes, please. Sure. So would you would you consider giving mentorship to anyone who's interested in pursuing a field other than medicine? I do that all the time. I do that for law, I do that for business schools, for political science schools. Yes, absolutely I do that. But all the research that I conduct is from publicly available data. So you can be anywhere in the world, sitting in your home or a library or Starbucks and collect and compile data. I do not do research on patients because that is confidentiality, institutional, uh, you know, um, regulations X, Y, and Z. Whereas whenever you're doing research from publicly available data, all your mentor will do is design a study, give it to students like you, just like Rachel and her friends and class fellows did. And all of them are getting authorship on papers. And based on that, whenever I send the letter of reference, I include the link to that publication. Because then whoever is reviewing your application has to click on that and proof is in the pudding. The publication is in front of that. Can everybody read this? Yes. Guys, come on, 300 people. This is disappointing. Yes. Impossible, right? Yes. Yes. How about now? Impossible. Yes. So what changed? Yes, it's your way of looking at it that changed. The letters are the same, the number of letters are the same, right? Their order is also not changed. The order is the same, the number of letters are the same, it's just the way you look at it. Alright? Muhammad Ali famously said, the boxer, he said, impossible is a big word thrown around by small men who prefer to live in the world they have been given than to try and explore the power they have to change it. Alright? Subspecialities in medicine. How many would know about it? Alright, you want to. But you are not even in medical school yet. Why? Oh, curiosity. Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> have you heard that? Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about some. By the way, this is what I do. Is the butterfly, radiology, skin problems, dermatology, which Nelly Nazar wants to do, uh, plastic surgery, which Sahil wants to do. So plastic surgery, if you do plastic surgery, you can go and live in Beverly Hills and you will be rich and famous and all the actors and celebrities will be your patients or clients. And um, I have... Uh, done projects on this and I'm doing a project with Sahil as well where he's going to publish on gender and racial disparity in plastic surgery and that sort of enhances his credentials and improves his chances of matching and by the way I've gotten it in writing from him today that if he is rich and famous he should not forget me <laughs> all right and so uh, you know uh, then you've got dermatology again a good very very good field you want patient contact, you've got surgery, neurosurgery. If you like adrenaline rush and you like, you know, to, to cure patients, then you've got some fields. And if you want to, you know, deal with celebrities and rich and famous people, you've got those fields. And also, you know, medicine gives you multiple, multiple options, opportunities. There are people who created the polio vaccine, all right, and then gave it to the whole world for free. They could have made billions and billions of dollars. So medicine has, it gives you that opportunity that if your focus is mentoring, which I my focus is, you can do that. If you want to, you know, uh, cure diseases, you can do that. If you want to be rich and famous, you can do that. How many have watched the movie Jerry Maguire? All right, one has. Let's watch this. And if you like money, you can have that too.
See, so remember, in life, if anything can go wrong, if you expect anything to go wrong, it will. It was like the fire alarm, right? Nobody expected it, it happened. We didn't expect that this hiccup, but it happened. So be prepared. Don't be disappointed. <coughs> See, if anything can go wrong, it will. And what you've got to realize is that the show must go on. The show must go on, right? Show does not stop. And also another thing I'm going to say is, also remember you're always on stage. <laughs> you're always on stage in life. Alright, so giving back, and before I talk about giving back, I'll quickly invite Sahil and Larry Dance to the stage to tell about their experience briefly and then we are done. I know we are out of time. Please. Thank you, Dr. Uh, my name is Sahil. I'm a first year UBC Medical School student. And today I'll just be speaking a little bit about my experiences with uh, the benefits of having a mentor. So to begin, I will quote uh, Alexander the Great, I think he said it best, and his words were that I thank my parents for bringing me into this life, but I thank my mentors for teaching me how to live life. And this is something that I really resonates with me, because it goes to show that when you have a mentor, you not only learn from your own opportunities, but you also learn from your mentor's successes their failures, their perspectives, their uh, obstacles, and you're exposed to this wide array of opportunities that weren't there before. So my personal experience, I remember when I began my undergraduate degree and I knew that I wanted to get into medical school. I had this end goal, but I didn't know about the pathway in between. And it wasn't until I started meeting with my mentors on a regular basis that I realized that they actually helped me to see my own vision more clearly. And I found that super powerful. So whether that be in the practical aspect, of actually showing you the steps required to get to your goal, or um, the support, the encouragement, the motivation, it's invaluable. And one last thing, I think at times, it's human nature to have self-doubt, to go through failures, um, but when you have a mentor, with that support, with that encouragement and the motivation, you slowly begin to realize that truly anything is possible and that you are meant for greatness. So that is uh, some of the benefits that I've noticed um, from having a mentor. And I'll leave you all with one quote by Isaac Newton. Uh, and his words are that I'm able to see further, not because my vision is superior, nor because I'm taller than others, but because I stand on the shoulders of giants, and hence I can see further. Hi guys, my name is Nadine Ness. Uh, I'm a first year medical student at UBC now, and I had a pleasure of meeting Dr. Kosa a year before getting into medical school. Um, and uh, I'm very thankful for the opportunity that he provided me with. So I started, he immediately got me involved in a research project, uh, which is near publication, and uh, it's about gender and racial disparities in the Department of Radiology. He connected me with residents, with other medical students, and he constantly provided me with great feedback on the research that we are progressing further and it's near publication. I can't thank enough for the mentorship that he provided me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, guys. So let's go. I'm not going to talk. I was going to, I was planning on talking uh, about some of the success stories of these mentees uh, in Canada, in British Columbia, and abroad. <laughs> But we have run out of time, so let me quickly go to the last slide, and then I'll... Alright, so let's do this. So the lesson, a, cab, a, a priest gets into a cab, and the cab driver, as usual, drives recklessly. And the priest is praying, reciting his beads, thinking of God, fearing for his life. And when the priest reaches his destination, he gets out of the cab, he scolds the cab driver and he says, you will go to hell. And the cab driver said, I just did you a service, I got you from point A to point B. Why are you sort of admonishing me? And he says, because you endangered my life and your own life and everybody else's life. A few years later, 
the priest dies, arrives at the gate of heaven, the angel allows him into paradise, says you were a good person, you served God, here are two wings, go and this paradise, you know, is you, you've given, been given access. So the priest is very pleased with himself, he's flying and enjoying and all of a sudden he hears a beautiful flute, somebody's playing a flute, he looks down, it's the cab driver. A golden flute, six pairs of wings and a castle on the ocean. The priest is extremely disappointed, runs back, flies back to the angel and says, you've got it mixed up. The angel says, how come? He says, I was the man of God, I served God, I preached sermons, I should get that flute, I should get those, those six wings, I should get the castle. The angel says, whatever you are saying is correct, but the fact of the matter is, when you preached long sermons, the entire audience would fall asleep. When he drove recklessly, everyone prayed. <laughs> So it's all results oriented, remember that, you know, it's all results oriented and someone, some, somewhere, someone is always keeping a tab and counting and you are always on stage even when you think you are not. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Joseph, for your speech. Could we just give another round of applause? So with that in mind, we're now going to be doing a 10-minute Q&A session. Uh, so when I, Dr. Kozo, whenever you're ready, we can start. We have two. Hello. Okay. We have two ambassadors on the side over there, and so if you have any question, please raise your hand. And awesome. Can anybody tell me what is she? What she is known for? Give the mic. Come on, you guys, come on. Thank you. Yes, 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 my friend. Not sitting. Yes. Not sitting at the back of the bus. Thank you. Actually, she refused to give up her seat. She was sitting in a section which was whites only, and a white gentleman came and asked her to move, and she said. No. She said, I've had it. Right? He said no. What do you mean? Guess what she what it it's culminated into. Right? The civil rights movement. And ultimately you had an African American president of the United States of America. Correct? In a country where people of color were treated as second class citizens. Alright? Who knows this? Who knows this one? Yes. Go ahead. Let's pass the pass the mic here. Let's pass the mic here. You'll have to stand up, please. Thank you. Um, all right. So basically, this is the Tiananmen Square massacre. So um, this is during like when the Chinese Communist Revolution happened. So. This um, man was standing in the middle of the street um, in China and basically refused to move when there was like tanks in front of him. Yes, so he actually stopped all these tanks that were moving to crush people. Alright? So he stood in front. By the way, don't try this at home. And don't quote me if you do silly things. Alright? Please. Alright? Yes, so this is space. Experience. You know, successful people are those who carry their experiences like a book and continue learning from their experiences. Silly people are those who carry their experiences like a mountain on their back which continues to crush them. Sun did set on all of us last night. It's not that I was poor and the sun set on me and you are rich. It didn't set on you. No, sun did set on all of us and it will set again. So instead of lighting a torch, some people curse the darkness. 
and it's a conscious choice. Eleanor Roosevelt famously said, learn from the mistakes of others. You cannot live long enough to make all of them yourself. All right. Company, very important. You can be with superheroes and be a hero. You can be with super, super villains and become a villain. But you cannot fly like an eagle if you hang out with turkeys. You know, the expectation is wrong that I'm going to be with turkeys and I'm going to fly like an eagle. No. No. <laughs> Whose plan did you buy? Alright? Stay away from those who try to dare you or shame you into doing things you should not be doing. So you will have friends who will dare you to do wrong things. You will have friends who will shame you or dare you to smoking or drugs or X, Y or Z, all those activities. Stay away from them. They're not your friends. Somebody who shames you or dares you is not your friend. So don't be fooled by that. Can anybody explain this picture, the bottom picture? We can't put it on that tripod. What do you think is happening? switch the orientation. At the max you could be wrong. That's fine. We've been wrong. Have we been wrong guys? Yes. yes. Alright. Yeah. For sure. Just put it in. Just put it in. You put it in. Oh, this you is only a guess, but was it because um, they were seeing who runs the best and then that animal did who run and he was saying that um, not prove that you're right, but that broke it in the first place. No. That part did not break that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it is a dog race, and you see a tiger comfortably sitting there. Right? He's sitting there because he does not belong in the race. He does not want to compete. It's not a matter of whether he'll win or not. He knows he can outrun the dogs. And hey, he can be a winner. But if he runs in a dog race, what are you going to call him? A dog! Thank you! Of course! So, a tiger knows better and so should you. Don't run in a dog race. Alright? Now, why, why do you need a mentor? Look at this. Look at this. Where do you think that is? And where do you think that is? It's in a park, alright? And this is exactly what life is. This is exactly what life is. And that is why you need a mentor, alright? So this is a video in which there are several students who are going to pass the basketball to each other. And what you have to count for me is how many times the basketball is being passed between students who are wearing white shirts. Everybody understand? How many times the basketball is being passed between students wearing white shirts? All right? This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. Now, 
this is why you need a mentor because otherwise you might miss the gorilla. Your count might be right, but you might miss the gorilla. And the gorilla could represent an opportunity. A gorilla could represent a door that was open for you. And that's why you need a mentor, all right? This is what a mentor will ensure, tailor-made solutions. When you talk about equality, this is what equality means. Giving everybody the same opportunity, but that's not what is going to make you successful. The opportunity has to be tailor-made. I am flat-footed. You give me regular shoes, expect me to run fast, I cannot even walk fast, all right? So I need those special souls. Similarly, everybody has their own special needs, correct? And that is what a mentor will do, provide you tailor-made solutions. Just like uh, Rachel said, you know, she worked with uh, my team. She is an author on one manuscript and acknowledged on another. Now every time those manuscripts are cited by somebody else, another researcher in their paper, the citation number goes from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, which means her resume continues to improve because of the work that others cite, uh, well, because of the work that is cited by others, her work. This is what a mentor will do. The clay is the same. Alright? The clay is the same. This is going to be hidden in a wall, painted over, never seen, never acknowledged, never appreciated, whereas this is going to be a prized possession that everybody will come into your house and ask you, where did you buy it from? How much was it for? Alright? So the clay is the same. The mentor makes the difference. Alright? And when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And what will the mentor or teacher will do? Create a sense of, a sense of urgency for you. Remove barriers from your path. Never let you give up. And Charles Darwin famously said, it is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the ones that can change. All right? That can change. If you failed once, don't give up. Don't get depressed. Don't waste your time. Okay, finding a mentor. How do you find a mentor? Very important. People find mentors. People come to me as well. We worked with somebody for two years, one year, 18 months. And my first question is, how many publications do you have? They're like zero. All right, how many projects did you work on? Eight or ten. Were they published? Yes. How come your name is not on them? Oh, I was told that students can work but they will not get an authorship. Also, the letter of reference that we got was a standard letter that they, the mentor gave to everybody. So that's, you are then wasting your time. Be careful when you select a mentor. Everything is now available online. So when you're looking for a mentor, see how many students are given authorship. How many of past mentees on those, you know, uh, mentors' manuscripts are successful. How many have gotten into medical school? How many got into residency? How many, you know, successes that mentor has created? Because there are people that will kiss up and kick down. You don't want that person to be your mentor. And it is incumbent upon you to watch out for your best interest. Alright? Available opportunities are not going to...